Hallo meine lieben Freunde, was geht, was genau, was ist, muss das gut, guten Abend, guten Tag, es ist dein Lieblings-Youtuber James Bray und ich reagiere heute auf German Reunification Explain. Now I've been doing a lot of uh, German related content and I know a lot of you guys are like, damn, <laughs> how? <laughs> well, let's just say a little thing called motivation. Um, I've been learning a lot more about German history. Uh, that's actually, in, in my personal opinion, one of my favorite sides of history just because of a lot of uh, very powerful things that happened around, um, you know, things like World War II and even afterwards, subsequent to that and um, prior to all of that as well. So uh, it, it's caught my attention and I don't know, I've been diving deeper into that to kind of learn more about it because um, it ties very directly into world history and everything and it's just pretty interesting. So German reunification explain, um, we just had uh, German Unity Day a few a few days ago and I didn't understand it to the, uh, the full extent so I made a video on it myself but I didn't realize there was already a video created so we're actually going to be diving nose deep into this today. Uh, it's off of history History Scopes channel. So if you guys haven't subscribed to History Scope, go ahead and subscribe to it. Uh, for all my people that um, you know are good at fact checking and stuff like that, let me know in the comments down below how accurate this is. Uh, but if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. If you guys are returning viewers, welcome to Luke. We post every single day, every single day. Um, so be sure to never miss an upload. Let's go ahead and dive nose deep into this thing. After you guys subscribe to the channel, like the video, feel the leave done. Los kids. German reunification almost didn't happen. Ooh. It was opposed by nearly all world leaders. Really? But there was one man who made it happen. One who convinced everybody. One man who vowed that Germany will be united. What? After the Second World War, Germany was split into several regions. I, I, I knew about that, but this is going to be pretty interesting. Oh, 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 commercial. What is often overlooked is that Germany was not separated into four regions. The four you probably heard about are these four occupation zones. Hmm. This part was under British control, this part under Soviet control, this part under US control, and this part under French control. Oh, wait a minute. So Bavaria was under uh, American control? I am I looking at this map right? C Bavaria was under American control for a while, right? Berlin was similarly divided amongst these four powers. But there are three more regions. Hmm. The first is this small area which became the Saad Protectorate, whose people decided to rejoin West Germany in the 1950s. Okay. Then there is this part, which today we call Kaliningrad Oblast. It Kaliningrad Oblast. It became part of the Soviet Union and wasn't just a country occupied by foreign powers like the rest of Germany. Jesus. This land was now Russian. The it seemed like, it seemed like Germany at one point was just a giant, like, um, how do I how do I put it? Um, I don't know. It just seemed like a, a a giant country party. Like you had a bunch of different countries like taking stake in in uh, different parts of Germany. Like Germany wasn't its own country. It was literally owned by a bunch of different countries and stuff. And I'm just like, dang, like, that kind of sucks, man. I mean, I understandably, I, I guess I see why it happened, but. That's just crazy, yo. That's like, imagine like, like, I don't know, let's say Canada, right? Uh, America has part of Canada. Russia has part of Canada. Germany has part of Canada. China has part of Canada. It's like, what? <laughs> Canada's like, what about us? <laughs> People were now Russians and their official language was now Russian. Wow. And lastly, this vast area was given to Poland, meaning these Germans were now living in Poland. Over time, the British, French, and US zones would become West Germany, and the Soviet zone would become East Germany. Because the capitalist West and communist East were on opposite sides of a Cold War, mm. the two stayed separate countries. There wasn't really any hope that Germany will be united. Mm. Over time, a wall was built between the two Germanys to make sure that people from the poorer East could not emigrate to the richer West. Oh, in the 1980s, dang. the economic and social differences between the West and the East were becoming apparent. Damn. Soon, peaceful protests broke out throughout the Communist East. Yo, that sucks. So, the East is on the outside, right? And the West is on the inner side of this, uh, this whole thing. I, I've always gotten this mixed up. Maybe I have them backwards, but that's how I'm seeing it. Including West Germany. Then, on the evening of November 9th, 1989, 1989. the East German press secretary made a mistake that would change history. Uh, haben wir uns dazu entschlossen, 
heute äh, eine Regelung zu treffen, die es jedem Bürger der DDR möglich macht. Oh, I heard about this. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, yo, I literally just reacted to something like this uh, last week. So he made a, uh, uh, an error. He said that people can cross the border like immediately. So the second he said it, everybody ran out and like, and like pretty much knocked down the wall, um, the Berlin Wall and everything. That was like, oh dang. Über Grenzübergangspunkte der DDR auszureisen. Dang. But he was wrong. In actuality, people could now apply to travel abroad in a few months, not right away. That's crazy. But the words were said, the people had heard, and flocking in the flocked thousands. To border crossings. That's because crazy. Because the press secretary misspoke, people thought that the gate was open immediately. The bewildered border guards didn't know what to do with the tens of thousands wanting to get through. Oh. And so, without being given orders to do so, the border guards opened the gates and let the East German masses through. Oh, wow. Nice. So it's crazy. So basically, it seems like East, or well, no, it seems like West Germany was like a a economic pocket, pretty much. Like you had West Germany that was like this, right? Um, like West Berlin, I should say, that was like super, like you know, c closed off, pretty much. And East Germany was pretty much forbidden from going inside. So it, it's like if there is like a location like let's say like chicago for instance right chicago is like a small part of illinois but let's say you boxed off chicago from the rest of illinois and the rest of illinois is like yo we're trying to get in so we can like work our jobs like oh my god you know because that's where all the jobs are that's where the, the the economy is when you box people out now they have like nothing you know they have like maybe mom and pop shops and smaller businesses but they can't really live you know so let's say they, they like you know like oh we're finally reunifying like you know all of illinois you know so then um you know uh, everybody from illinois knocks down the walls around chicago and uh you know the other side of uh, the people from chicago are like oh, okay cool you know whatever you can finally get a job in the city, a higher paying job, higher paying jobs, better income, better income, better housing, whatever, and everybody's happy. That's kind of similarly what happened here. And I'm giving an example for Illinois and Chicago reference that, that never happened. But, uh, you know, just to compare, if, I, if that was an accurate example uh, or, you know, uh, I should say an accurate, yeah, an accurate uh made up example that I made for this. Let me know in the comments down below. If not, also let me know because your boy's ignorant, you know, and it's always, it's always low skate. That's crazy, man. People. And so the Berlin Wall fell, the division was over, and the people were liberated. Nice. To the world, this signified the end of the Cold War. To Germany, a call for reunification. Interesting. So they weren't reunified after the Berlin Wall fell? Germany will be united. Mm. Upon hearing this news, the West German Parliament began singing the German national anthem. So wait a minute, at this time, were they allowed to sing the first stanza of the German national anthem? Or were they able to only sing the, th the third stanza, I want to say, of the German national anthem? Because uh, that's interesting if they were singing the, the first stanza. Because I heard that you guys weren't allowed to sing that or something. But one person was notably missing. One person who would change Germany forever. One person who would see to it that Germany will be united. Mm, Chancellor sad. Helmut Kohl, the leader Helmut of Kohl. West Germany. Helmut wow. Kohl was in Poland at the time, celebrating the first freely elected Polish government since wow. World War II. Wow. Kohl was surprisingly quiet when he heard the news that the wall was open. Hmm. He asked himself, what should I do now? Interesting. This was a historic moment. Mm -hmm. If Germany was ever to become one country, it would need to be right now. Yeah, yo, it seemed like Ger <laughs> after World War II, Germany got sliced up into a billion different pi like pie slices, man. Like every country wanted a slice of the pie for their own. It's like, oh, free land? I right, bet. Like, and it's just like Germany wasn't really, it, it, it wasn't its own thing at all. But it, honestly, this extensive history behind Germany, right? It explains a lot, and I'm glad I'm, I'm checking these videos out because I remember prior to even being interested in Germany at all, I thought, you know, Germans all look the same for the most part, right? And maybe like a few different variations, but you know, eh. I wasn't expecting it to be wildly diverse. And there's been a lot of major events that have happened since, you know, even then, 
that have added to that because people are like, dude, like Germans are literally it's like America, but, you know, Germany, uh, as far as the, the, the diversity goes, like, you know, there's so many different people, so many different races, backgrounds, creeds, religions, all that stuff living in Germany all over the place. Everybody speaks German, but uh, everybody looks different, you know, and that blew my mind because I never knew that. So, you know, diving into history and seeing events like this, it kind of shows me like, oh, OK, well, this makes a lot of sense, you know, like, I mean, imagine traveling to Germany, right? And then you're in an area that's predominantly Russian. It's like, isn't this Germany, though? Like, what the hell? But then not knowing the history behind Germany. So you're like, oh, 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 when you figure things out. Now, obviously, it's been a long time since then, but it could, it could uh, possibly, it definitely influences uh, how certain areas um, and, and people in different groups of areas behave and conduct themselves or whatever. And even like, you know, architecture and stuff around that time, um, just because of historical events that happen in, in that history. And it makes a lot of sense to me looking at that. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And so I, I, I just want to understand, you know, um, I haven't been in Germany ever. And I want to just, I want a very thorough understanding of um, the history, the culture, everything before I even go. So I'm beyond educated when I get there and I know what to do, what not to do, things like that, you know? And then of course, like why certain things are the way they are, what influenced what structure or what um, uh, moves and motives in certain areas or even like how people behave in one area versus another, like it will open my mind. It opens my third eye, I feel like, and that's very important. So he rushed back to Germany and began writing a plan for German reunification. Nice. This plan was made in absolute secrecy. Hmm. Nobody, not even his own government, knew what was going on, except Kohl and those closest to him. Oh, damn. In fact, he had only sent the speech to other world leaders an hour before he made it. Jesus. Jesus. An hour, bro? Jesus. And he only sent it in German. Oh, so my god. So they gosh. wouldn't be able to read this speech and stop him before he made it. Wow. And so on November 28th, a mere two and a half weeks after the wall fell, Kohl made his announcement. The way to Deutschland, einer, das wissen wir alle, is not from the green tisch to plan, or is not to plan with a termin calendar in the hand. Oh, bro. <laughs> listen, this is that, that, this is that God tier German, man, because, <laughs> listen, I know how to say basic things in German. I can hold a light conversation, but I cannot say big words. I can't even say big words in English, bro. I can't even say big words in English. So to throw big words in German, bro, I'm just like, what? <laughs> What'd you say? Und abstrakte Modelle kann man vielleicht polemisch verwenden. I'm talking about polemic, by the way, because I don't know what polemic means. Aber sie helfen nicht weiter. Aber wir können, wenn wir nur wollen, und schon heute auf jene Etappen vorbereiten, die zu diesem Ziel hinführen. Germany will be united. Nice. This speech was very popular in West Germany, but caused major anxieties in the rest of the world leaders. Really? See, Why? The British, French, United States, and Soviet Union still had troops on German soil. And they... Oh, so the Cold War was really, a, obviously it was a standoff between the US and Russia, but they both had stake in one country. So it was like, because is this the country where they came dangerously close to like firing into each other and stuff? Because that is the closest we were ever, we ever, we ever have been to a World War Three. Like, and I didn't realize it was in Germany, but that makes a lot of sense now. Because um, imagine this. America and, and, and England, right? Britain, we're, we're our allies. We're allies, right? And you have Russia that has a tiny little section of Germany. Like, if Russia unloaded, bro, I feel like they would get taken over in a heartbeat. But um, at the same time, they got, you know, the I think they're called the Axis powers and stuff like that. So, damn, dog. It would have been a, have been a chaotic mess. And then Germany, meanwhile, like, everybody would just be getting ran through because nobody would really be paying attention to them like that. Like, that's crazy. Crazy, 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 man. History is wild, bro. That so-called reserved rights, meaning these four countries had to allow German reunification. Ah, and true. all four powers were basically having none of it. Facts, 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 facts. Because this is around the, the Cold War era, isn't it? Unified Germany is a powerful Germany. And a powerful Germany had been their enemy in two world wars. Oh, <laughs> America said, hell no. Nah. 
<laughs> so Russia said the same thing. He said, nope, nope, nope. We're not making that. Bro, World War II was like a big, like, it was like a slap in the face for like the entire world um, when viewing Germany. It's like, y'all want to be reunified? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> Silly. And like literally everybody else, like, all the other countries you can clearly see, like, we're just like, nah, like we're not having it. So this will be interesting to see how, how this all came to be because I don't know. This is it. I didn't even know about this, bro. I did not even know. I, I I didn't know that there was such an opposition against German Germany reunifying. Because think about it. You know, after the World War, you would think like you know you guys signed peace treaties and stuff like that. The whole country is what it is. You know, comes back together and they just honor that. But because you know you had Hitler running shit like during World War Two and everything, and uh, that dude betrayed a bunch of people. He betrayed uh, uh, Joseph Stalin, I think. Like. Uh, during the whole Eastern Front gig or whatever, actually before, right before that, I think, because uh, they were they were homeboys, I guess, until uh, they weren't, <laughs> and basically Hitler just said, you know, screw a plan, you know, like screw an agreement. They made an agreement, like Hitler would go and make agreements with people, and then turn around and violate big time on every agreement he made. So like people were just like, I don't know about that, bro. Like, what if it happens again? But like. Now the new leader, but like just as a country, you know. So it's just that shit's crazy, bro. Absolutely crazy. But this is wild. When Helmut Kohl was not deterred. Germany will be united. Nice. So first up, Helmut Kohl had to convince East Germany to even want to join the West. Ah, true. Well, this was an easy task. Reunification was seen as an escape from poverty, and during the East German elections, the first and only free elections in East Germany. Kohl mm. campaigned for pro reunification parties. Nice. And they won. Nice. So that's one down. Okay. Now it's time to convince the rest of the world. True. Because Germany will be, be united. united. <laughs> Next up was France. Let France, oh my god, bro. <laughs> it's like pulling teeth, man. That must have been like one of the hardest countries to convince. And Francois Mitterrand. Germany Francois was founded Mitterrand. on the defeat of France. And historically, the two had been rivals for control of Europe. Facts. A unified That's Germany would be economically, industrially, and politically superior to France. Yeah. But Mitterrand was crafting his own plan. Germany really wanted reunification. He realized that by having this new powerful Germany at their side, with the rest of Europe at their back, it would have a big role to play in world affairs. Interesting. So Mitterrand demanded a bigger role for the European Union. A single European army, a single European foreign policy, hmm. and a single European currency. Interesting. That's... And we can see the results of Oh, it. wow. So that's how the, the euro became a thing. So that's how the, that's how the EU became a thing. So it was it was Mitterrand, Mitterrand. Like, it was his his idea? Was it his idea to create, like, the EU? Is that what, they're, is that what he's implying right now? Like, oh my god. Okay. Germany and France are the main deciding powers in the EU. That's the euro gave France a strong currency. Wow. And with the UK leaving the EU, the European army is finally becoming a realization. But this was exactly what the British did not want. Hmm. The British Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher, lived through the Nazi air raids, and she herself saved money for a Jewish girl to stay with her family for sanctuary. Damn. She feared Germany would dominate Europe and the UK over time. Jesus. If we did not retain our national identities in Europe, the dominant people in Europe would be German. Yeah. But by this time, the United Kingdom was no longer the superpower it was before the Second World War. Ooh. And by Thatcher's own admission, the UK had become the least important of the four powers. Dang! What happened? Why? Like, how how did that even come to be? Like, did oh did uh, I mean, I just I I reacted to the um pretty much like the 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 fallout of. Uh, World War Two, I'm pretty sure, like the the lives lost during World War Two. But were there that many from like the UK where their power was just like pretty much non -ex not non existent, but just not as significant? You know, that's crazy because I've always heard the opposite that you know the UK was a powerful force, like a force to be uh, reckoned with. You know, and would eventually bow down to the will of the other three. Damn. Well, at least France was now persuaded. Okay. If Helmut Kohl could get the other three powers to agree, maybe that was enough. I'm pretty sure once you get America convinced, then Britain will go with you. And then Russia will just be like, eh, I don't know, bro. 
I don't know. And maybe that's where like some peaceful talks will happen. It's all about diplomacy, man. I feel like it's it's uh, you have to. It's verbal judo. You have to communicate what you want to another person in a way that sounds beneficial to another person. You know. And he wouldn't need Britain's approval. It was time for Cole to move on to the next power, the United States of America, led by President USA. George Bush. Oh, oh, George George Bush Senior, Senior, because this does not look like the little Bush. This is Big Bush. Unlike the other three powers, the USA didn't really fear a powerful Germany. Oh well, uh, yeah, <laughs> I know, <laughs> but dang, that's crazy. Well, Europe was an ocean away and wouldn't be able to cause too much trouble for America. This would, in fact, take a piece of territory away from the USSR True. and would put distance between their European allies and Soviet troops. True. And it would put NATO troops slightly closer to the Russian heartland. Ew. So, yay, that's two powers convinced. Nice. It really started to look like Germany will be united. So yeah, you got you got America convinced. So maybe the I guess out of the, the last remaining two, because it, it it clearly seems like the UK it didn't really have a say in any of this. So I'm gonna say Russia was probably the hardest one to convince. But now came the Soviet Union, led by Secretary General Mikhail Gorbachev. His Mikhail would be a tough Gorbachev, one. Yeah. East Germany was seen as part of the Soviet Empire. Gorbachev would not simply hand over a client state to their rivals. Hmm. Not only did the Soviets fear a powerful Germany. It also feared British, French, and US troops moving into East Germany, coming ever closer to Moscow. Yo, and that's the thing. So during World War II, Moscow was dangerously being, uh, close to being overrun. But honestly, I don't think historically Moscow has ever been like dominated like that uh, by any outside country. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I am wrong. You can hold my, my uh, feet to the fire on that one. But I feel like Moscow and Russia has been that's been like the that's like the pinnacle of Russia. That's like the pri like Russia's pride is right there, you know. And of course, it's in a bunch of other places, but primarily Moscow, you know. And it st it stood strong, like literally, like during the Eastern Front, Russia took all of its soldiers from every part of of, of the country, right? While while like the other other parts of the country were experiencing some extreme losses, and they pulled them back to surround Moscow. They're like, bro, you could. Like, you can't have Moscow, dog. Like, you already had, like, you already, like, dominated, like, the other parts of the country, but not Moscow, G. So, like, this is actually pretty, uh, it's a valid reason why they would be a little bit worried. Because they did, like, I think the Germans did come dangerously close, dangerously close to, like, you know, taking over Moscow. Like, or, like I guess, not even taking it over, but entering Moscow. Like, they were, they were, they were just close to entering Moscow. And I think... Uh, the, the, the I think from what I was described, the weather like uh, at the time was enough to kind of turn them around because obviously uh, the Russians obviously or were used to that kind of weather and you know the Germans weren't so the war kind of took a turn for the better for Russia because like hey listen <laughs> y'all need to get the hell out of here <laughs> you know what I'm saying and that, that's what it I got at out of this it. point that we have to look at the rest of Europe particularly Eastern Europe. Because while Eastern Germany was protesting, the rest of the USSR's client states were in similar stages of revolution. Interesting. Within two years, the Soviet Union itself would collapse. Gorbachev was acutely aware of the state of his country and needed money to push through economic reforms he hoped would modernize the Soviet Union hmm. and, hopefully, keep his country together. East Germany was broke and it was kept afloat by continuous money supplies from the USSR. Interesting. So what if he could sell it to West Germany? He sold his section to West Germany? Well, dang. I mean, honestly, once you put a price tag on it, man, it, it, they'll pay just about anything to get that back. Because that's like the missing piece. That is literally the missing piece. It's funny how they, they still have the UK on the other side of this whole ordeal because at this point, if you looked at like the, the the roster, you have obviously East and West Germany reunited. You have France, you have the U.S., um, and they're trying to get Russia in on it, right? But they're not really convinced yet. And on the other side, and, and, and like literally, like on the other side, it's just Russia and the U.K. Even though we talked about the U.K. earlier, so is the U.K. the last country they had to convince? He would lose this large expense, gain some much-needed income. Yeah. and could gain this new powerful Germany as an important ally in European politics. Hmm. But there were some conditions. 
First, no NATO bases in East Germany and the Russian withdrawal was not allowed to be presented as a retreat. Oh, wow. Yo, that's crazy. Because it would make them look weak. That makes a lot of sense. Like, you can't say that we retreated and we and we, we, we lost because now the rest of the world is going to be like, oh, ha, ha, okay. And maybe, like, their economy would take a hit because no one would take them seriously, you know? like NATO agreed. And so West Germany sent a delegation to Moscow to discuss Germany giving loans to the Soviet Union wow. in exchange for German reunification. That's cool. He did it. Three of the four powers had agreed. See, then the UK, bro, the UK can't do anything. They just got to roll with the punches on this one, bro. Like, we're reunifying. Uh, uh, nah, we, we are reunifying. Bring your ass over here. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> UK over there sitting pretty like they can do something about it. They can't, bro. Like, they can't. <laughs> the UK would soon join the other Exactly. <laughs> and Germany will be united. There you but go. now came one very important question. What territory does German reunification include? What? You see, large portions of land had been given to Poland and the Soviet Union after World War II. Okay. Helmut Kohl wanted all these lands returned. Yeah. They were Germans, West Germany had never given up its claim to these territories, and they should be returned to Germany as well. Okay. Now, it is one thing to ask for two countries to become one. Mm -hmm. It is a whole other matter to demand Soviet and Polish territory just to be handed over after 45 years. True. They're like, bruh, you asking too damn much. Like, But it's good that Germany finally got every, the four everything. four powers basically told Helmut Kohl, it's either East Germany or nothing. Damn. In the end, Kohl relented. He agreed that the newly formed Germany would relinquish all claims to Polish and Soviet territory in exchange for German reunification. Hmm. And so it was done. Nice. The Soviet Union pulled its forces back from East Germany in 1990. Nice. The four powers ended their occupation of the two Germanies. Right before I was born, bro. And a single unified Germany had been born. Nice. It was time to party. Because Germany... <laughs> As the, what, did, what did the other buddy say? Jägermeister! <laughs> had been united. That's crazy. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Definitely give it a thumbs up, man. Go and check out the original link in the description down below. This was a very informative video, and I had no idea. I had no idea, man. This is, like, very intense. Very intense. I, I was not expecting this at all. I definitely learned a lot more about the reunification of Germany. I didn't think it was that complicated to be honest i thought it was literally just between east and west germany and that was it boom all right like but it's deeper than that and i didn't even realize so many different countries had stakes in germany like oh hey like boom like i own this i own this i own this and you have to convince all these other countries to bring germany together as a whole absolutely insane man absolutely insane well you guys let me know what you think about this uh, whole ordeal uh it was a pleasure checking this out uh as per usual we post videos on the daily so all i ask is that you guys like comment subscribe you guys are into the vibes i will see you guys soon and really soon bis später leute ciao hey what's up did you guys subscribe to the channel did you subscribe to the channel Ah, well, if you haven't, make sure you do that. Also, we do have a Discord. The Discord link is always gonna be in the description down below on any of my videos, and it's dope. What we do on Discord is pretty simple. A lot of you guys are, I'm collecting you guys from a bunch of different countries, a bunch of different places, and you guys wanna teach me a whole bunch of stuff. You guys can join the Discord and teach me anything. You can send me any kind of messages and stuff. You can actually post memes. You can participate in the community and just make friends. Just Go ahead and join the Discord and see what, how, what what kind of situation you're getting into for yourself. Also, there's going to be some giveaways in the future. There's going to be some giveaways. But to create some incentive for that, I need you guys to follow me on Instagram. Are you guys following me on Instagram? You know what my Instagram looks like? You probably don't know what my Instagram name is. <laughs> it's right there. Just go ahead and check it out. Check it out. Check it out. It, it's dope. Uh, just follow me on Instagram. I, I do live streams every day. I try to, you know, engage with you guys in every way possible. I know a lot of, a lot, not a lot of creators are very engaging with their fan base. I try to be engaging. So just go ahead and check it out. There's no harm, no foul. Follow me on Twitter too. I honestly am trying 
to grow my Twitter. <laughs> but I don't really post that often on there. But when I do, you guys will be the first to see whatever post those will be. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you guys want shout outs or whatever, I don't know, a lot of we have a lot of upcoming independent artists that have been hitting me up as of late. I might create a series where I get I favor my international independent artists and stuff, and I might promote you guys for free, but just it might just be one or two a week, you know? I and mean, you guys can give me some feedback on that. But all to say, follow me on my social medias. All right, if you guys aren't doing that already, you need to do that because that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> I'll see you guys later, but enjoy the content I create. It's gonna be random. Uh, reaction videos, a lot of a lot of everything. Reaction videos, vlogs, challenges, cooking videos, gaming videos, <laughs> anything you guys suggest when you join my Discord or message me on Instagram. But I'll see you guys soon. Take care, follow me. Peace!